Hello everyone, welcome to another little extra video and I've done one earlier in the year uh, when it came to an in getting out of an international break. Well, we're halfway through, we're coming out of Christmas break, so I thought that we would do another wildcard video if you're wildcarding out of the Christmas break to start the second half of the season. Actually, sorry, we should, I should be saying shuffling for this game. Wildcard would be the Premier League game. Um, but yeah, this is if you're using your shuffle, uh, now you're not uh, bound to use one first half, one second half. So some people might have already used two. Some people might not have used either yet. Um, but personally, I did want to do one because it is the halfway point. But this might be a bit of a hard shuffle because generally you want to use it. You have a lot of players with poor fixtures or a lot of injuries uh, and stuff like that. And you're trying to shuffle into getting players that have an advantage, that have really good fixtures at the moment. And as of right now, when I've looked, the only team that definitively has really good fixtures still right now is Sassuolo. And so that sometimes complicates things because it's uh, maybe a mid-table team that might not even beat some of the weaker teams anyway. But we're going to anyway go through this. I'm going to explain what my thought process is. We're going to talk about some things. And uh, I hope you like it and find it useful. So please like and subscribe to the video. Um, that would really help me out. We're at 70 uh, subscribers now. So trying to get that next time I get closer to 100, hopefully by the end of the season. Um, any support is appreciated. And let me know if you agree or disagree with what I have to say in this video. So I have what my wildcard team would be here. One thing to keep in mind is I'll have a different amount of money than other people do, which is fine. Most people have relatively the same. And the fact that I still have 1.5 in the bank means that most teams will be able to make this team unless you've just had bad players on the start and not transferred them out and they just keep dropping in your uh, bank. But we're going to start. And the goalies, I have them the same as mine. I'm not just trying to say that I've picked the perfect two goalies. My goalies have not got me a lot of points this year. But as you know, for me, I like using the cheapest possible goalies that are still starting. Um, so I'd probably stick with Providel. Spezia's fixtures actually aren't terrible. Now, obviously, any game could be a tough game for Spezia. I'm not discounting that. But upcoming, Spezia have Hellas Verona, Genoa. They have a tough game against Milan. And they have Sintoria and Salernitana after that. Also, little side note, Salernitana is going to keep their team, which is great. They did sell off the team to a different owner. So we don't have to worry about them not being a thing anymore. After Salernitana, they got Fiorentina and Bologna. So like you got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks there that, uh, and only AC Milan is like the for sure could potentially get drubbed. And as we know, last game, Providel kept a clean sheet against uh, Napoli and he was the goalie of the week. So there is potential for big returns with Providel when it comes to saves in random clean sheets that may occur and the reason that i get zoet is just in case providel doesn't play and then zoet will step in as the backup keeper for spezia so other goalies and that's why i pull up this list here if you want to try to ride this to swallow fixtures and you're okay with having a little bit more of an expensive goalie because concealing might be a good choice um ospina for napoli we have some other ones that are cheaper that are around the same thing so sirugu uh, could be okay and this is not necessarily having good fixtures it's just a cheap starting goalie that can get you some decent points um and so these are all around the same price point so uh, Hellas Veronia's goalie Montipo and again you don't want a player that has that plays on a team or a keeper on a team that has a lot of players that you probably want on your outfield too so teams like Spezia you're not going to have a lot of uh players in the field uh, for so that's why I'm okay using up two Spezia spots in my goalkeeping but just you can just scroll through and see some goalies that are a little cheaper that fit um, the criteria that I'm talking about now one thing you're going to notice moving into the defense is I've spent a lot more money here because I found this year you can spend a little less in the mid uh, at least up until this point, I have not very much money in my midfield right now, um, which might have to change in the future. But even in the attack, there's some uh, less expensive good options for or that you might be looking at, which we'll see. But in the defense, I think I, if I were doing a shuffle right now, I'd take 
uh, Theo Hernandez. He's just been so good. He's almost been, if you play the Premier League game as well, he's kind of been a Trent Alexander-Arnold, what someone that you can rely on for goals and assists, as well as being on a team like AC Milan that can get a clean sheet any game they play. So I think he would be a good one to have, but obviously a very expensive defender at 6.9. I'm pretty sure he's the most expensive defender uh, in the game. I can even just give that a check right now. If I go here to defender and sort of by price. Okay, so Guzan's would be the most expensive, but he also has a flag on him right now. Let's say it just says not available. Okay, but he's second most expensive defender to have right now. And if you go by score, you can see that he comes pretty high. Wow, I did not actually, I thought, that's a lower on the list that I thought that he was gonna come. But I just know most often, as far as defenders go, he's one of the most involved. And as you can see here, a lot of our Napoli just because they had so many clean sheets during one stretch of the season. Um, I'd also take a defender from Inter, just the top of the table. Again, could get a clean sheet any game, especially when they're not facing another top side. So I wanted someone from Inter in there. Dump, as we can see, some of them are uh, more expensive, like Screenier, who has that more attacking threat, I'd say. He gets on a lot of uh, corners and stuff, and he is generally their defender that will get the attacking returns. But Dumfries plays a wing position, and I don't think that would be a bad decision at all and a consistent starter. I have, I'm holding Cambiasso in there. He's been getting a lot of points actually in recent weeks, and he's just, you need someone that's going to be cheap. And he's normally on my bench anyway, and I think he'd continue to normally be on my bench, but just to allow for more money elsewhere. But he's still a starter and starts higher up the field. So I would definitely keep him in my squad. This is strictly based on the fixtures. We got Ferrari here, captain of Sassuolo. Being the captain, he's been seeing the start for most games. So if I'm picking a Sassuolo defender, I'd probably take Ferrari over everyone else. You could go with one of the wingbacks if you want, but Ferrari was one of the least expensive. I think the wingbacks were all around five, which I know this is around five too, but every coin sometimes matters. I guess with this kind of bank, you could go for a more attacking defender. So if we go and look at Sassuolo's defense and you do have this extra money, and we can see here, he actually has the most score so far. So why not go for him? But you could go for a couple of the 5K options if you see that one's more attacking than another. And uh, lastly, I'm going with Di Lorenzo here. Now, again, another expensive defense, defensive option. For some reason, I still, I've tried looking and I don't know why Mario Rui has the flag on him right now. I currently have my team and last time he had the flag, he still ended up playing. Um, so... I might just keep him, but if I were to pick a different one, I'd probably pick Di Lorenzo. I, one of the other very attacking defenders in uh, Serie A and uh, playing on Napoli. He's almost fits the same criteria as Thiero Hernandez. Attacking on a good team could get a clean sheet at any point. And again, if you're certain, he literally has the most points in fantasy this year so far by a defender. So I don't think that's one that you can go wrong. Another one that you could look at if you're a little more hurting for money is Romani and he starts at the back every single game for Napoli it kind of looks like um, he plays more of a central center back position so not as attacking as Di Lorenzo but Napoli is just a team that just keeps picking up clean sheets so I don't really think as long as you have a consistent starter on Napoli I don't really think you can go wrong there um, working our way into the midfield so again we've used a lot of money on especially three of our defenders so we have less going forward um, I want to triple up on Sassuolo right now, to be truly honest, just with their fixtures right now. If in case you don't remember, we'll quickly go over what those are. Uh, Sassuolo upcoming has Genoa, Empoli, Hellas Verona, Torino, and Sampdoria. So five good fixtures coming up. And then it does get definitely more challenging from there. You got Roma, Inter Milan, and Fiorentina. Um, but to get you there, that's five fixtures that if you're using a shuffle, all of these are in for all five, right? Uh, so I'd start out with Berardi. He's kind of been uh, not so great the last couple of matches that I've had him. Uh, but I still think that he is their go-to man. That's their talisman of the team. Um, has been for several years now. And I just think you don't give up on a player like that, where generally the goals go through Berardi. So yes, it's an expensive option for someone that hasn't really been performing that much. But I just would hate that if I didn't play him or didn't have him over these five fixtures and he goes scoring a goal, maybe two every game. 
So I would want to have him in there. And then that's an easy player to switch out later when the fixtures uh, dry up. And because he's 10.2, you can switch that into almost any other midfielder, especially if you have money in the bank. Uh, I've really been enjoying Quadrado, even though sometimes he's said to be starting at more of a right back position, which is generally the opposite of what you want. Normally you want defenders that are playing midfielder rather than midfielder than playing defense. Uh, but he does get forward. He has been in on a lot of Juve goals. He's maybe been, if not the best, one of the best Juve players this year. Uh, they're having a pretty sorry season, to be truly honest. Um, but he has been a shining light and he has been getting a lot of attacking returns, only 6.4 mil um, that it costs. So I definitely think that Quadrado would be a good option to keep costs low and to have someone on a big team that is performing well right now. So that's why I'd say Quadrado. And then uh, Kondreva as well, one of the few players on a smaller team that are uh, really performing really well, especially for an older aged player. Um, he's been doing great. Generally, every goal that Centoria uh, scores, he has something to do with most of the time. Uh, and if we see, Centoria actually doesn't have terrible fixtures. In the next five fixtures, they have Cagliari. Then they play Napoli. That's going to be a tough one. He'll probably sit on my bench for that game because I do have him right now. Then you got Torino, Spezia, and Sassuolo after that. So not a bad run of five fixtures, but there is that Napoli game in there that would make things tough in the future. Um, I'm just going to skip over Chalinoglu for a second. Uh, Fabian Ruiz, he's been playing really well. He's another cheaper option and he was injured, but it says that he should be coming back early January, which the first fixture is February 6th. So that is early January. So I'm speculating that he'll be back. He doesn't have the red flag anymore. Um, so I assume that he'll be back for the fixtures uh, once we return on February 6th, January 6th, sorry. Um, and yeah, he's a good option. Napoli also is going to have, so they face Juve first game back, but they will have okay fixtures. It's not as, uh, doesn't have as much longevity as it had last time, like earlier in the season where they had like nine or 10 awesome fixtures in a row. But after Juve, they got some Doria, Bologna, Salernitana, and Venezia right after that. Uh, so very good fixtures where you might want three Napoli players in your squad if you're shuffling right now. Also, it does seem like a lot of teams that are going to have good fixtures only have one tough one. So even if you wanted to wait for the next week to shuffle, that would be okay as well. Uh, then we get to Chalinoglu. Now, I don't know why he has the flag on him right now. I know he got subbed around the 67, which is kind of average for a sub in the last game that he played for Inter. Um, but other than that, I haven't seen a reason why he was flagged. So just because I have not given Chalinoglu enough respect this year and he just gets points every single game, he gets an assist or a goal, and uh, he just seems worth the price tag that he is right now. And that's why if he's healthy, I think I'd want Chalinoglu on my side. Um, now I have had Barella all season so far, so I'd probably figure out a way to go from Barella to Chalinoglu with uh, money I have in my bank. Um, and it might take more than one transfer to do it. But he's just been so good all season, and people that have had him since the start are probably most of the people that are near the top of the uh, table right now in fantasy. So I just think that that's a good go-to as long as he's playing. I will tell you what to what I would do if he is actually injured or not available right now. It could also just be a suspension. Um, so he'd just be out one week. But... Anyway, that is someone that I would want in my team if he's available. After that, I think the striking is pretty obvious based on what I've been talking about so far. Skamaka, top of the uh, attack for Sassuolo, again, hasn't been performing the last two games, but no one in Sassuolo has the last two games. Um, but I still want to make the most of these fixtures, so I would keep Skamaka, also very cheap attacker, which leaves money to be placed elsewhere. And then you've got uh, Vlaovic, who has just been scoring every single game. I've talked about him enough, I think. I think it's just obvious that you need this guy in your team. He scores against the good teams. He scores more against the weaker teams. And he's an obvious, he's a captain option every single week. Fiorentina has been on at a very nice run of fixtures lately. And they still got four or five more to go. They got Udinese, Torino, Genoa, and Cagliari in their next four games. They face Lazio next and then Spezia again right after that. So they have a nice little run. Of, they're coming kind of towards the end of this very long run of fixtures that have been really good for them. And definitely some options there for 
uh, Vlaovic to be our captain. And lastly, uh, Dries Mertens uh, for Napoli, again, trying to take advantage of a short little good run of fixtures there for Napoli. Um, now, with that, I don't know when Oshimhan is supposed to come back. So I tried looking. I haven't seen that answer yet. Um, but I'd say if Oshimhan's still out for a longer term, Dries Mertens is a good player to have in your squad. He's been doing well since he's taken that top role. Um, and if not, then I would take, uh, and sorry, so, and then the fix to this uh, situation with Cholinoglu is if he is injured, you could uh, downgrade him to someone like, ja or either upgrade or downgrade. One player that you could put in instead of Cholinoglu, if you have the coins, which I would, is Zhao Pedro, who's really over well i wouldn't say overperformed he's always been kind of the best player on genoa um but he's just been excellent as far as uh, fantasy goes and you could always um uh try to like lower the price or uh, find someone lower in price than chalanoglu and try to upgrade mertens to someone like immobile that would never be a bad decision immobile is like the goal scorer on Lazio, maybe the score, goal scorer of Serie A as well. Um, so you can never go wrong with having him in your team. Just he's a 12.2 mil player that will take up a lot of the funds of your team. But that's kind of uh, what I'm thinking. So again, hopefully this will help you. Hopefully Chalanoglu is not injured because I think he would make someone's team so good. Um, but this is kind of what I'm thinking. So let me know if you think uh, I'm missing players, if I should be adding someone else. Keep in mind, this all has to fit within the budget. So yeah, obviously Immobile would be great to have in the team, but that would really shake things up elsewhere. Um, I'm going to reset this before I accidentally make all these transfers and go down a bunch of points. But uh, other than that, remember to please like and subscribe. Tell me how you liked it and let me know if there's any other of these types of videos you want. And I'll be doing the uh, Game Week 20 preview soon as we're approaching uh, January 6th. And that is also going, as of right now, I think all of the games are scheduled to be in the same day. So that'll be a fun day of Serie A fantasy. I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to hearing from you and uh, talking to you again soon. Take care.